July 10th, 2011, I kissed my mom goodbye at the airport and was on my way to spend the summer in Costa Rica. I was feeling excited and nervous. I was looking forward to a new adventure, teaching English, but I was scared because I didn't know much Spanish. When I arrived, I was greeted by my program's coordinator. She gave me a big hug and told me I was going to have the time of my life. The first half of my trip, I spent time getting to know the other volunteers and traveling the country with them. We saw some amazing things. We traveled to a volcano, ziplined in the rainforest, learned about Costa Rican history and culture, relaxed at some beaches, and did some shopping at the local markets. Although there was a language barrier, I was happy to hear that many Costa Ricans knew at least a little bit of English or were interested in learning. When my Spanish or their English were not helpful, we relied a lot on gestures, pointing, and our facial expressions to help us communicate with each other. The day had come to meet the children and adults I would be teaching English to. I was nervous. I didn't know how we would communicate with each other. First, I met my adult class. They spoke a good amount of English, so I was relieved. They were very interested in learning more and learning about my life in New York. Then, I met the children. They hardly spoke or understood any English. When they spoke Spanish, they spoke very quickly, so it was hard for me to understand them. But our language barrier did not matter because all they wanted to do was play. language, I learned how important nonverbal communication really was, and how my students and I were able to talk to each other using things other than words. I felt so passionate about this that I decided it was my destiny to continue to teach people with language barriers and language difficulties how to communicate with the people around them. for me to go back to New York. My experience in Costa Rica was one I would never forget and one that changed me forever. When I arrived back in New York, I immediately began applying to graduate schools to become a speech-language pathologist. And here I am today.